Okay, now we're ready for what I'm calling Endocrine 8. And the real title is Calcium Homeostasis. Okay, homeostasis, keeping something constant. And now we're talking about calcium. Keeping blood levels of calcium in some normal range because everything that's in the blood tries to be into some some normal range so let's look at this little uh, blood panel from a dog and I'm going to point out a few things here before I enlarge it we we saw this before but it's an Australian Shepherd canine it says there two years of age and it's a female and I want to concentrate on blood levels of calcium so I'm going to get this here enlarge it a little bit just to point out what a couple things here okay here we are calcium you can't see up above but well the number is 10.3 and the units are milligrams per deciliter and I want to talk about that but so here's the actual value from that dog 10.3 milligrams of calcium per deciliter of blood okay and then you can see this visually here's the low end of the normal range here's the high end so anything in here would be low anything up here would be high you could call it hypercalcemia and hypocalcemia and it looks like perfect here's the actual data 10.3 is in the normal range so for this dog it has a normal amount of calcium in its blood and I'll get this out of the way because I want to make sure you understand about deciliters a lot of things are designated something per deciliter of blood or it could be serum or plasma deciliter abbreviated DL and that equals to 100 milliliters okay now back to calcium homeostasis we have to talk about two hormones and the hormones do opposites have opposite actions so you could call them an antagonistic pair of hormones now you should know that there are other antagonistic pair of hormones in the body some that we'll talk about some that we don't but in this case what one hormone does the other one does the opposite and therefore you can call it an antagonistic pair who are they calcitonin and I'll tell you what that minus means for a minute in a minute and parathyroid hormone the previous uh, lessons I think it was seven and maybe six talked about these hormones okay calcitonin I put a minus behind here to say hey it tends to lower blood levels of calcium the plus here says hey I try to elevate blood levels of calcium okay so this is very important I've got two more graphics I want to show you and I'm going to explain one very slowly and the other one I'm going to probably let you pause and go through it you should be able to reproduce this these graphics at least in some manner so you can see where these hormones come from we've talked about that but then where they go that's called their target tissues and then what do they do when they get to their target tissue okay so now we've got a great graphic that somebody made it's out of some book someplace I found it on the internet it's figure 44.6 from someplace and let's do this it's not bad at all it's very good let me explain it homeostasis trying to keep normal levels of calcium in the blood okay let's go over this way first what happens if calcium levels which is ca plus two if they get too high in the blood okay they go above the normal range so this would be hypercalcemia well the thyroid gland 
and we know it's actually the parafollicular cells of the thyroid release this hormone called calcitonin. And if you remember, I said it had a minus behind it, which the actions it does tend to help bring down calcium levels. And that's what you want if they're too high. Let's look at the target tissues. Calcitonin goes to the bone and says, keep more calcium in the bone, deposit calcium. So bones are actually very dynamic. They can take in calcium and store it in this case. So as blood goes through the bone, it's going to take out, the bone is going to take out some calcium from the blood. That's going to help lower blood levels of calcium. Lo and behold, the gut doesn't absorb as much calcium when we tend to be under a calcitonin influence. And I'll explain that. It's explained better later. Okay, then calcitonin goes to the kidney and it says kidney decrease the calcium reabsorption. When you see this word reabsorption, that means there's calcium in the urine, but the kidney can take it back into the blood from urine and in back into the blood. But calcitonin says, don't do that so much. All those actions then cause calcium to fall and hopefully bring it back to the normal blood levels. Well, here we go. What happens if the levels get too low? Let's say we're using calcium and there's not a whole lot in the diet, something like that. Well, that's a signal to the parathyroid glands to release parathyroid hormone. Now remember, this had a plus behind it in my beginning. So then whatever it does, it's going to help get calcium in the blood. So now parathyroid hormone goes to the bone and it tells the bone, hey, give up some calcium. This arrow says, I'm going to take calcium out of bone and put it back into blood, not in the thin air like that would look. So that action increases blood level of calcium because you're going to release it from the bones. Then, the next slide does this better, but we end up increasing calcium absorption from the intestines. And the next slide I've got does this better. But anyway, parathyroid hormone goes to the kidney and it says increase the re reabsorption of calcium from the urine. So when you increase reabsorption, that means it's going to reabsorb it from the urine that it made and take it back up. That's kind of what this arrow says. Hey, it's going to maybe go to the urine, but no, we're going to take it back into the blood. All these actions then cause calcium levels to increase. Pretty good little uh, diagram. Now I'm going to explain this diagram because it's basically just like the last one we looked at, but it does a little bit better job of telling you what parathyroid hormone does. So let me start labeling some things, or I guess let me move these terms around. You know that if there is rising blood levels of calcium, you could call that hypercalcemia right there, hypercalcemia. And then you know that calcitonin tries to lower blood calcium. If blood calcium is low, that's right over here, hypocalcemia. If you have too low of levels, remember hypo means low, and emia means blood, and this cal C is actually referring to calcium. So low calcium in the blood, high calcium in the blood. Now let me show you what this diagram does better. Let's look at hypocalcemia. That means we need to get calcium back up. Parathyroid hormone is released by the parathyroid glands. It stimulates that bone to release calcium. And by the way, bone is a depot tissue for calcium. And I didn't say that the last time. So depot tissue, what's a depot tissue? 
Well, a depot tissue is something that can store a molecule at a certain time, and then it can actually release it, give it back to the body. So it circulates in the blood, the depot tissue. In this case is bone. And what does it give up or store? Calcium. Okay. Now, back here to parathyroid hormone. And the rest of it I'm going to let you look at. But I wanted to point this out. Of course, it goes to the bone. We said that. It goes to the kidney. And then it stimulates the calcium reuptake or reabsorption. But the previous diagram did not talk about this. Parathyroid hormone also stimulates the kidney to make active vitamin D. So here's a new little twist. You should know that vitamin D really should be called a hormone. It was mislabeled and history just kept it vitamin D, but you could call it hormone D, I guess, although most people won't know what you're talking about then, but vitamin D is a hormone. The synthesis of vitamin D is this. It starts in the skin by sunlight, then that molecule goes to the liver and gets tinkered with. Let's say tinkered means it gets an enzymatic step in the liver. And then finally, this inactive vitamin D gets to the kidney and under the stimulation of PTH gets to be active. Now, the active vitamin D circulates in the blood and its target tissue is the intestine. And the intestine makes calcium binding protein. Okay, so I just put that word on the screen, or the words, calcium binding protein. So down here, active vitamin D goes to the intestine, and the intestine makes calcium binding protein, and that allows the increased uptake of calcium from the intestines goes that uptake calcium goes in the blood and all these things contribute to raising calcium levels so take a look at that pause read understand that it's calcium homeostasis you can have high levels of calcium you can have low hopefully you have normal levels